comparison to compare the pair. Hey guys, Anthony 4 before 4 Diesel. We've just uh, got Ricky run number two happening for the 4x4 Adventures every now and then. We'll call it an annual gathering. We found this nice little spot. It's camp number eight. We've just come up past La Cola, stopped in there for about lunchtime and um, had a bit of a look around. It's Friday, so it's pretty quiet here. Beautiful weather, 33 degrees and sunny. What a spot. The river's just over there. Um, got a few of the boys out, spread out over here, but We've got this awesome spot happening in here, so I think we might huddle in here. You should like, subscribe, and turn the bell on, guys. Mate, that's not your thong. Get your foot off it. Cut. Right, somebody's listening on the post. Look at this avocado dips, roast cakes and dips, cheese, cabana. These are the right biscuits if you want to come on a trip. And of course, the uh, cheese and onion, mate. Yep, you get a free trip, no problem. Bit of a ripple across the water. Which way's upstream? Well, try and work it out. How would you work it out? Subscribe, people! Put the bell on. Like the video. <laughs> Saturday morning, we've headed up uh, up Tambaritha Road, up Howitt Plain, up on top of Howitt Plain. What was this lookout called again, Mitch? What's it called with a D? Anyway, you drive in. It's a K or two to drive in. And you've got a bit of a lookout. And then we'll continue along the Howitt Plain. Maybe have a look at a hut or something. And then head down the Zecker, I think. Lookout. Moving along the plane, how it planes hut with my uh, reflection <laughs> shadow. All right, so we come down. Uh, we're coming down Zeka Spur at the moment. Zika, Zeka, however you want to say it. It's got a few switchbacks on it, a few rough ones. We're just moving through one of them slowly now. Um, gets a bit steeper here heading down into the valley. We've got about 30 minutes down into Wanangata, probably. Um, probably at least an hour for you to get down the whole track. So, yeah, we just continued along Howard right onto the Zika. And there we're cruising down. Another nice little rough section that you turn around and drop down. What's that squeak I've got? What's going on there? Probably got a rock in somewhere just to annoy me. Sort of went around, that's a bit washed out on the inside there. Prado's just eat it up, don't they? Oh, oh, fully flexed. Not quite. Got a good wheel in the air up there. Oh, look at that. Nice. I saw that. 
Have a look at this, the tree mark. This is where everybody hits the tree. subscribe to our channel to make it more popular and more people can learn about cars. The Hilux uh, tractor truck gets the job done in the end, doesn't it? Okay guys, get ready to jump behind the truck. Get ready to hide behind the truck. Hilux track control really works hard. This is where you want your front locker. Fully flexed up. So yeah, another example of how the Hilux is uh, extremely disadvantaged with the uh, old school traction control. We'll see how the 150 Prada does it this time. Really good comparison to compare the pair. And that's why 150 Prados don't need lockers. Leave them alone. The factory technology is awesome. All right, that was just coincident, was it? Well, here's another 150 Prado. This one hasn't even got a bull bar. <laughs> He'll do it nice and slow, and you'll be able to see the traction control, how it works. Plenty of flex going on there. Happy days. And this is how the 120 does it with a front locker. Just so you can, uh, I can tell you what's going on. Oh, not as easy as the 150s. Well, I can try and get that to turn. Mm, yeah, yeah. Try and turn the steering though. Right, look out. That's what a bull bar's for, when you nearly hit the tree all the time. So the fact of the matter is here, the 150s with the traction control did it easier than the 120 with a front locker. Keeps going for the tree. How's my rear bar here? That's not a broken inner. The inner's good. That's what normally goes. This is the outer. Wow, have a look at that. Anyway, apparently I'm getting good at braking things. So we did a bit of a vehicle recovery to get the vehicle off that little hill. And the lessons learned again, and I always say this to people, when you're not close to home, don't play around on track. So I said, hey, anyone want to have a play? At this little, it's just a little hill on the side, whatever. Everybody had a play. We'll take the 120 up there, see how it goes to compare the 150. The 120 without the lockers drive straight over the hill, more or less. A little bit of pausing here or there, but it really got the job done. It's got no lockers. The 150s, you saw how well they did it. The Hilux struggled a bit because, you know, <coughs> traction and you, know, you haven't got the lockers, you haven't got good traction control. Take the 120 up and ping O what we believe we've done it's the right hand front inner we've done a spline on the drive shaft i believe it's spinning Zzz. so that's kind of a good problem to have it's ruined the inner boot um so the drive shaft's technically no good also it's going to need a new drive shaft that's all right we've got spare ones there but um 
Yeah, spare, reckon, spare, spare ones back. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, you get a bit crossed up in that stupidity side track, uh, and that's what happens. So you know, scuffing up the new rear bar again. So yeah, I could say that I regret bothering to do that. Should have probably just driven straight past it, like what I do most of the time. So it could have been myself or any of the other vehicles. So lucky I copped it. My fault, because. Uh, Let's say I allowed the stupidity because we don't need to do try little side tracks. There's enough fun and entertainment on the main tracks. Um, so yeah, lesson learned. But it's a good lesson. Our diff's okay. We can still drive down the track. It's good to have the front locker. But I'm quite surprised how the 120 struggled with the front locker. But you've got to remember we've got the really old KO2s that are over seven years old. The rears are like slick, so we can say that you know they weren't helping the situation either. Um, and everybody else had a bit of, there was a fair bit of digging that went on since the first vehicle went over, so perhaps now I'm making excuses, but uh, just trying to work out, because it did seem to struggle, I didn't um, see that happening, and um, there you go, right, and having the locker normally helps you get the job done, but apparently, you know, I had to just grip, the vehicle moved, it hit a rock, and that's when it just, yeah, popped, the, what happened? You do, do a spine, so the whole drive shaft's spinning inside that tripod on the inner, so the, the CV, it's all still in there, but the boot's ripped, the grease, oil, whatever you want to call it, whatever's in there, all comes out, um, and of course you lose drive at that wheel, but by rights it can't go anywhere, so it's still uh, safe to drive, lucky this time we're coming into the Wanangatta Valley, we're about 8 minutes from our lunch stop, maybe, maybe 10 or 15, so we drive a bit slower than the average Thing, so it always seems closer than it is. Anyway, we're going to find a nice spot for lunch down here, and then I'd say we'll probably wrap up this video and uh, subscribe, turn the bell on, I'll chuck in some photos of Wanangatta Valley or something like that, and we'll uh, start a fresh video from Wanangatta Valley through to uh, Talbotville or something like that on some different tracks, some steep ones. We'll let you know how the Prado goes without that uh, right hand front wheel engaged. I think we're going to go okay and we'll make sure we've got a vehicle in front just in case there's any issues, that sort of thing. So, happy days. Thanks for watching, bada bing.